Are we live, Grant? <laughs> we are now live, by the way. We're, we're live, Grow Coffee. Can you hear us? A big shout out there. Thank you very much for coming along. Good evening, everybody. This is a, a brand new show by the a Film Company called The Scene. Now, what we're going to do is travel Ayrshire and find out as much as we can about the different acts that are in the area. And obviously tonight, we'll get some really great guests. Now, th this would never have happened if I hadn't bumped into this young man, Scott. Young man. <laughs> <laughs> Scott and I got together, had a wee chat about doing something like this, and we came in to grow, and we felt it was a great place to do it. So, and we met Debbie as oh. well, and had a wee chat, and also, I have a very special young lady who is with me today called Alexis. Alexis, introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Alexis Young. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we'll be interviewing a lot of talented acts performing their very own original songs like Gemma Lviv, Scarlett O'Sullivan, Rona Bryden and we're starting with Debbie and Scott tonight. So we'll just get straight to the point. What's the music scene like in Ayrshire? <laughs> the music scene in Ayrshire, well, it's got quite a varied variety of musical acts. You've got cover bands, of which I, I'm a member of a, a cover band. We've got local singer. Well, the cover band I'm in is called The Splinters. Might talk about that a wee, yeah. a wee while. But we're here to talk about the music scene, not about me. <laughs> We've got people like Scott and Jeremy and Scarlett and Rona and myself now venturing into singer-songwriting. Um, my background is actually your amateur opera company. I've got a musical background. And my friend, Jai McDowell, some of you might know him as well, friend of mine. So the background, there's very talented chap, chap very talented and very rich now, I believe. Uh, <laughs> We both came from a musical background, so don't forget about that. There's some great opera groups out there as well, the Gaiety Theatre. Um, I do feel though the venues, we're losing venues in Ayrshire. We've got more musicians than ever, fantastic, but we're losing the venues. And if you don't use them, you lose them. Is that not right, Scott? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you, play, you, you play them, Scott, quite regular, so. <laughs> I, I think there's a, there's a really good Ayrshire music scene. Uh, I, I love original material. If anybody knows anything about me, I like to promote original music. And, you know, we've got Rona, 15 years of age, playing tonight. Scarlett, only 13, songwriter. So th there's, there's really great people, uh, other people that work with me in Possibility Screams. Debbie's just a little bit older. <laughs> <laughs> so there's, there's lots of people, even like last year, friends of ours like Alan Frew, Nicky Morgan, Jamie Clark. Jeremy Lviv, oh, pe people put down there just now, by the way. original music. Um, so I think I think it's good. Venue 38, great, ven great venue in here that really promote original stuff. And Pelican Rogue, the, the thing with uh, mentioning people, you're always going to forget someone. But the mocking, is it the Mockingbirds? Yeah. Uh, and excuse me, anybody who's watching and I forgot you, just that there's a lot of people out there doing original stuff and young artists. Um, I think that's what I think it's, I think it's, it's, it's a good scene. You and I, Scott, have talked about this quite a bit, you know, talking about the scene itself in Ayrshire over the past, say, 20 years even. Uh, since the pandemic, have you seen a, a dip in the venues? You mentioned, Debbie, about a number of venues we had. All of a sudden, they disappeared. And I was talking to somebody earlier on, they remembers Taylor's in Cowinning years ago, oh, yeah. when I used to host it over there. That's gone. You know, so are the venues disappearing, or are the venues disappearing, but they're getting disappearing, but they're getting better? I think during COVID, people were frightened to go out. Obviously, they couldn't go out, and since they've come back out of that pandemic, people don't want to go out as much anymore. They still want to appreciate music, but I have noticed people don't come out as much, and the venues can't survive without people coming in. So we're hopefully going to try and change that and get people to come back in. Live music is food for the soul. It's like therapy. There's nothing else like it. So, yeah, do you want to add something to that? Scott, you I would say, I would say they're obviously not with me, I'd be it every night. Thanks, Scott. It's my lead note, sorry. You mentioned earlier original songs. How would you write, how do you start writing your songs? Like, how would you start writing a song? Where do you get your inspiration from? Oh, man alive, that's a great question. <laughs> um, well, I, I wrote a song two weeks ago called Millionaire. And I got the idea because I watched Olivia Dean singing a song called Millionaire, which was a cover. 
So I've written a song, nothing like Olivia Dean, by the way, she's listening. But that was the inspiration, was the word millionaire. And I do, I feel like it sometimes, I count up my blessings, I feel like a millionaire. So that was one inspiration from one word, millionaire. It can come from anywhere. I think if you're an artist and you're open to things, just so many things can just, I mean the things in, that we co-wrote in Davy's debut album, which you can buy by the way, is that about time? It was about time. So, you know, it, 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 you can be inspired by so many things on any given day, I think, if you're an artist and you're open to write. I hope, I hope that was a good answer. Debbie, one of the songs that was in there was Love, Love, Love. Yeah. You seem to like that for some reason. Could you explain why? Well, on the album, there's nine tracks and one cover, but Love, Love, Love was written by the lyrics by my partner, Robert Neal. Robert was a huge Terry Hall fan. For those of you who are too young or too old to remember, Terry Hall was one of Britain's, uh, <laughs> not too old, Terry Hall was one of Britain's most fantastic singer-songwriters. He brought Ska in in the 70s with the specials, the Colour Field, Fun Boy 3, and uh, Terry quite often would say, love, love, love. So when Terry passed away, Two, two Decembers ago, he was only something like mid 60s, and his last words before he passed were love, 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 never forget it. So, Robert, being a huge fan, put pen to paper, and he's written some of the most heartfelt lyrics I've ever had the privilege to sing. And we shared it on my page, and I shared it in Terry Hall fan page, and a couple of ex members of, of the specials and um, Fun Boy 3 have actually li listened to it, and they say it brought a tear to their eye. So, hopefully, it won't bring a tear to your eye tonight, but hopefully, you know. And we've got two backing singers that were actually on the album, Scarlett and her mum Tracy, came in to watch me recording it and they got lumbered to sing and I got, we got them up. So yeah, love, 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 never forget it. It's the last track on the album because he's done, he was an amazing singer-songwriter. Please check out Terry Hall, his back catalogue, it's outstanding. We're, we're kind of entering a, a, a world now, YouTube, here we are, live. We can do it quite easily nowadays. Now, why not just do Zooms? rather than coming to venues. Because we need people, we need, we need this. We need to feed off the energy of the crowd. That was, that was your cue. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what's Sorry. missing, isn't it? That, that's, that's the idea. Absolutely. Zoom's so easy and things like that. You can do that really easy. You can go into YouTube, you can sit with your phone, sit at the back door and perform a song. Mm. Okay, connection maybe to other people throughout the world. But the problem is, is getting this live feel yeah, that absolutely. we're picking up just now. Absolutely. The best live program or best live show you've ever done, where was it? Tonight. <laughs> oh, you're, 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 right. you're a right suit. I don't know, I've played quite a few. I, I, everyone's different. But Scott was saying we need audiences. Musicians need you guys. You are so important to us because we feed off you. I don't know where the best one is. Perhaps, I have to be, maybe I've blown my own trumpet here, but I had my debut album party launch, 21st of October, in the jail bar in Freswick. And Scott and myself performed all the tracks, and I think I've never, never been prouder of myself. And it was mobbed, so I think maybe that was one of the ones up there, definitely. But, but tonight could be on that list as well. Yeah, well I agree <laughs> with that totally. Your best venue, Scott? Well, I've actually played I've, as I've said before, I've played everything from churches to jails, literally. <laughs> I have. And uh, honestly, some of the most memorable gigs I've ever played was in pris prisons in America. And it were fantastic. And the best gigs are when the crowd are behind you. Or, or in front of you. The crowd are with you. Yeah. And, and that, I played this afternoon at a private party. There was six people there in Presswick in a conservatory, and they loved it. So you don't need, I've, I've played it in front of 1,500 people before, it's probably the biggest crowd. It's not always the biggest crowd, it's the crowd that are with you. I think this young lady's gonna ask something about the splinters. Ooh. Yeah, I was um, just wondering, like, how did the band come about, and like, what's your favorite song in it, and right. why? Okay, well, I, pe I, I play in a four-piece cover band called The Splinters, uh, we play a lot of punk and a bit of pop and a bit of alternative music and we came up with the name Splinter because my, my guitarist Neil at the time got a splinter on his finger. He goes, oh I've got a splinter, I says, we splinter off in all directions. That's the kind of name and my favourite song, oh, we used to do a Kate Bush song, now, you don't often hear Kate Bush 
um, we did um, Hounds of Love and a Punky Style, so probably that one, but we play a lot of different songs, and we play songs that we enjoy playing, and hopefully the audience enjoys it as well. <laughs> well, tonight what we're going to do, after every interview we have, they're going to perform a couple of songs. And uh, my feeling for original music, I've always wanted that, you'll know that through the years, with the J.B. Clarks and people like that. What we want to do is get Debbie to go up and sing us a song. Woo! Then we'll have Scott to sing us a song. And straight after that, we'll have Rona come along and have a wee chat with us. Debbie, take it away. Oh, oh. Thank you. Thank you very much. And just to say to you while it's setting up that the people I've got here just now who are operating the cameras and the sound, they're all media volunteers. It's a media club that I've set up in North Ayrshire and Urban, and uh, the idea is, is to give as much experience to people as possible within the film and media. Uh, we've been doing it for the past 10 years as Ayrshire Film Company, and hopefully within the next six months, we're going to launch TV Ayrshire. Now, the scene tonight is the first. I'm hoping to do a tour throughout Ayrshire in different venues to highlight original music and highlight venues like this. So that people like you come out and support people like Scott and Debbie. Take it away, Debbie and Scott. Thank you very much. Very shy at primary school, and I was actually turned down by the school choir because I was so shy. But here I am now talking about my debut album. So I wrote this is the first track on my album, and I wrote it after having a conversation with my mum. Uh, she would say, "Why didn't you do this earlier?" But I didn't. But I didn't have the hunger back then. But I do now. So it's called Never Had the Hunger. It's the first track on the album. Hope you enjoy it. My mama said, my darling girl, back then, if you'd had the chance, where would you be now in this old world you were made to sing and dance? My mama said, my darling girl, every time I hear your voice, it takes me to that place. But I never had the hunger Like I do now
Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Can you hand you over to Scott now to do a wee song? Oh. Hey, come on. She's amazing. Give it up for yeah. Debbie Campbell, everybody. Come on. So I'm going to ask a favour. Does anybody mind if I take a photograph of the crowd? No. I'm going to ask again. Does anybody object? No. Right, okay, kid on, you're enjoying yourself. Here we go, look as though you're having fun. One, two, three, come on. Uh, over here, one, two, three, uh. It's going on social media, you know that. So, um, I, uh, I was a privil privilege to put out an album in the 2022 called Coffee. The title track's called Coffee, we're in Grow Coffee. So, what song do you think I'm gonna sing? That's <laughs> I'll do you right there, that's the next album. So this is called Coffee, so uh, feel free to sing along if you know it. Where's your tambourine? We're well, live in Facebook, I believe, right now. Clap your hands, somebody, help me, come on. Hey! I love another talk with you over coffee. Hey, you always look so great Like a movie star framed in light sweet perfume And diamonds in the night What's the kindest trip from your tongue? The ways of the world that don't belong in you Don't belong in you You were innocent and young And you always keep your head above the water your hair is luminous and gold and your strength is draped in gentleness. I love another talk with you over coffee and love. Sing it! Hey, I'd love another talk with you over coffee. Put the world to rights. Put the world to rights. Come on, it's Saturday night in the big city of here. Clap your hands, somebody. Come on. My friend, it's just great to laugh about the good times. We're looking back, looking forward to the setting sun. We will sit down together when it's over and the dust to dust, ashes to ashes. Hold my hand. Darkness passes away. It's never here to stay. Let me hear your beautiful voices. Well, I'd love all the coffee you'd love. Come on. Well, I have a coffee and love and other talk with you. Put the world to rights. Put the world to rights. Remember those times, just the two of us. Talking like little children all the time in the world. Laughing, relaxing. Let's do it again, let's do it again Sometime soon in the city or the town When are you coming around? Come on, Fiona When are you coming around? Everybody When are you coming around? When are you coming around? Here we go Well, I'd love another talk with you Love another talk with you Hey, I'd love another talk Over coffee, I'd love another talk with you Put the world to right 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 Hello everybody and welcome back to the scene with TV Airshot. We're now with Rona. Rona, what do you think the music scene is like in Airshot? It's, it's very good. There's a lot of community in it and mm -hmm. there's really, really lovely people that I've met through it. I mean, for example, Scott and Debbie and everyone else is here tonight. Mm -hmm. And little events like this are just so, so lovely and it's really nice. Mm -hmm. um, but there's not a lot of stuff for someone who's my age and a little bit younger. It's not so easy to access, mm -hmm. but what I've got and what the music scene in your shirt is and what I've got access to is just really good. So it's do you mind me asking, how did you get into guitar? 
guitar. Oh, so it was, I was eight years old mm -hmm. and um, everyone else was learning to play piano yeah. and I wanted to be a little bit different, right? <laughs> so I was like, I'm gonna learn to play guitar. So mm -hmm. that's basically how it started and I got lessons and mm -hmm. then it kind of progressed from there, but yeah. yeah. How, how would you write your songs? Because obviously you're quite young. Yeah, so yeah. How, where did you get the inspiration <laughs> from? Um, I suppose I get the inspiration See, sometimes it just kind of comes to me out of nowhere mm -hmm. and the amount of love songs that I've written, even though I've never been in love, is <laughs> absolutely crazy and I don't know where they come from. Maybe I was in love in a past life, I don't know, but <laughs> I just, they just kind of come out of nowhere, so they do, but yeah, so. I th I've got the performance bug, um, I'm in it for yeah. life, I'm in it for life now, <laughs> but yeah. Definitely. How do you deal with stage fright as well? Because obviously some people find it really difficult, and especially when you're younger, you're not as used to going on stage because I play the violin. Oh yeah, so nice, nice. I'm yeah. terrified going on stage, so how, how do you deal with it? I suppose just kind of like forgetting that you're going on stage and I'm nervous like five minutes before, yeah. absolutely shaking, mm -hmm. really, really nervous. But then I think once I get up there and once I'm hidden behind my guitar, I feel like I just put on a stage persona mm -hmm. and I'm just, I'm ready, I'm in the mood and I'm ready to go, do you know what I mean? But yeah. how I deal with it, I don't really deal with it. I just kind of like have my freak out five minutes before. <laughs> and, then like, yourself yeah. and, yeah. and then I collect myself and it's like, right, okay, mm -hmm. performance. Yeah. <laughs> have you got a favorite song that you've wrote before? A favorite song that I've written, mm -hmm. Well, I'm playing it today actually. It's kind of become a bit of a theme tune. Mm -hmm. It's called Maya Jones, so that's mm -hmm. my favourite song. So it's Why is it your favourite song? Um, because it's written about um, someone who's really confident and who knows where she wants to go yeah. and knows how she wants to get there. Mm -hmm. And I think it's almost Maya Jones has become my alter ego a little bit, so she has. Yeah. So that's why it's my favourite song. Mm -hmm. oh. I'm stumped. <laughs> is, this, is this a freezing bit? Yeah. I was going to ask you to go back to the music scene in Ayrshire. Yep. With about a kind of serious note. Uh -huh. You heard Debbie and Scott talking about yep. it. They've been in the scene for quite a, a long time. And they know the scene and what's happened to the scene. Yeah. Do you see that at your age group? I suppose I do. I feel like not not so much, but I think you can you can definitely see the impacts of COVID and less people coming to, like you'll be organising an event or you'll be going to something and there'll be less people there. So there will. Um, then maybe would have thought there would be and there'd be people who wouldn't really want to go out and stuff like that. So I think that that is the kind of impact of COVID because people don't really want to come out after COVID. But a little bit, but maybe not so much, but you do still see it, yeah. There seems to be more emphasis, more of these days, on festivals. Definitely, actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you mean. That's very true, yeah. Have you been attending festivals? Is that something you've had the opportunity to play in? Yeah, most stuff is like Nige Fest, stuff that I've done with Scott. It's been like festivals, a lot of stuff like that, but um, yeah, so I have, have been a couple of festivals, but yeah. Performing? Performing, Your, your yeah. persona, I've actually seen a couple of videos. Oh yeah. How would yeah. you describe yourself? Oh, myself, like performance self? Yeah. Um, I don't know, confident, performance self, confident, um, and I don't know, I, I don't know, confident, that's one word, confident. Yeah. <laughs> your hair. Now, maybe to the older generation, do you remember Ian Hunter? It used to be Motley Hoople. Yeah. I love Motley Hoople. Look at the I hair. Do. I do. It's exactly like Ian Hunter and Motley Hoople. Go. Well, I, believe it or not, I used to have hair like that, but it's not that they were trained and just disappeared. He's still got really nice hair. He's still got a nice curly hair. So yeah. <laughs> but uh, song-wise, songwriting, yeah. um, it's a very difficult genre to, to, to work in. Definitely, there's so yeah. many songs out there, so many songwriters. I know, I know. How do you break in? How do you make yourself different? I think how I try to make myself different is like the way, like the way I dress, because I've always got something patterned on. I try to like kind of dress a little bit different, and I suppose like in the songs that I write, I try to like make sure that they're all different styles and that they're not just fixed to one style. Um, so I suppose that's kind of how I'm trying to make myself stand out a little bit. And how do you, how do you promote yourself nowadays? Um, mainly through social media and Instagram and TikTok, all that stuff. Um, because honestly, I couldn't think of any other way to do it. But through that, I also obviously do gigs, and like that's kind of a way of promotion as well. Because every new gig is new people there. You know what I mean? New people. There be new people that have never heard me today as well. So through gigs and social media and stuff like that. Through something like this, we want to promote and, and highlight people like yourself yep. to come through. More and more. Yeah. This young lady's just back from Italy. Oh, lovely. She, is that she, for part of the violin? Yeah. yeah. Ski chap. Oh, nice. Ski chap with the school. So. Lovely, lovely. Mm -hmm.
Yes, that's it. I, I know. Tour, I tour with <laughs> yes. You play the violin you were with the North Ayrshire Orchestra, is that right? And technically it's a viola, but I just say violin because it's a lot easier to say. Because a lot of people don't know what a viola is, but yeah, I play the viola. Pretty cool. So, so you have something Sorry. in common, you know, yeah, I that kind of age group. Yep. That yep. trying to break through into that, that scene, that uh -huh. music scene, yep. which is so hard. It is, through. I know. It's not easy, but it's definitely worth it. I love performing so much. It's definitely worth it. The end, five years' time, where do you see yourself? <laughs> um, I suppose I see myself, well, ideally, you know, performing big stages, but you never know. But yeah, performing more, having a kind of fan base, and just enjoying it. Do you know what I mean? And really enjoying performance and enjoying just doing music, you know? You're going to perform two songs, yep. right? Tell us a bit about the first song. Okay, so the first song, Maya Jones, I've kind of told you almost Maya Jones is a bit of an alter ego. And then the second song, Arms on My Enemy, um, I like to leave it kind of up to the listener to decide what it's about. But I suppose it's about having something that you really want to get, get away from. And you really, really need to get away from it. But it's like, how, how are you going to do that? So that's what Arms on My Enemy is about. Well, there you go then. Um, <laughs> um, would you like to perform your two songs? Definitely, yeah. Right, so Vona is now going to go up and perform our two songs, please. Thank you. A big hand for Rona. This one's called Maya Jones.
Thank you so much. It's like someone's called arms in my enemy. What a voice. We're just going into a wee five minute commercial break. We'll be back with uh, Scarlett O'Sullivan and 
Jeremy Levy, who's standing over here ready and ready to go. See you in five minutes. This is TV Airshare with a brand new show, The Scene, hosted by Alexis Young and Eddie Gemmell. Highlighting some of Ayrshire's finest talent with a live stream from Grow Coffee in Ayr on the 20th of January. Special guests, Debbie Campbell, Scott Nicholl, Rona Bryden, Scarlett O'Sullivan and Jeremy Levy. So join us on The Scene Live on Saturday the 20th of January. The Scene is an Ayrshire Film Company project providing real-time media experience for our volunteers. When I joined the Royal Observer Corps back in 1983, this was my very first posting to Skelmley, which at that time was within 25 groups, Royal Observer Corps. Warming up, ready for the game. Don't know if my knees great. could handle it these days. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, this is Eddie Gemmell from Fitma Shorts. As probably you're all well aware that over the years we've been going out to football park, use the media and to film football matches. We've now set up a, a, a new site called Coffee. Now I can do with a coffee here, by the way. It's really cold here at Rugby Park today. But the coffee is ko-fi.com. In there you can donate any sort of money, you could buy a coffee for £3 or whatever it is, or you can donate to the company. Now the idea is so we can buy more equipment. The equipment we have just now is about seven years of age old. Now the problem is we want to keep up to date, keep up to speed with everything that's happening within the media. So any donations from yourself to ourselves, greatly appreciated. Remember, www.coffee.com. That's K O dash FI. Ayrshire is home to some of Scotland's most stunning landscapes and rich history. And at the heart of capturing it all, there's us, Ayrshire Film Co. CIC. Our goal is to tell stories that matter. Stories that bring attention to the unique beauty and history of Ayrshire. And as a social enterprise, we are dedicated to providing high quality training and meaningful opportunities to young people in Ayrshire. From documentaries to short films, we are bringing to life the stories of the people, places and events that make Ayrshire special. The Ayrshire Film Company have helped us to tell our story to showcase why Kilmarnock is a town worth celebrating. By working with young people, we're not only capturing the essence of Ayrshire, but also providing the next generation with the skills and opportunities to continue the tradition. I first wanted to get into media when I was at school. I was glad to find Ayrshire Film Company. I did a lots of different things with them, from football to the Murramus. So it was very great at learning both professional skills and personal skills. From there, I was able to get a job at Rangers Football Club, where I am now currently a videographer. With a dedicated team of professionals and a passion for mentoring the next generation, Ayrshire Film Co. is dedicated to telling the stories of Ayrshire in the most compelling way possible. Join us on a journey to discover the heart of Ayrshire.
This is TV Airshare with a brand new show, The Scene, hosted by Alexis Young and Eddie Gemmell. Highlighting some of Airshare's finest talent with a live stream from Grow Coffee in Air on the 20th of January. With our special guests, Debbie Campbell, Scott Nickel, Rona Brighton, Scarlett O'Sullivan and Jeremy Levine. So join us on The Scene Live on Saturday the 20th of January. The Scene is an Airshare Film Company project providing real-time media experience for our volunteers. When I joined the Royal Observer Corps back in 1983, this was my very first posting to Skelmley, which at that time was within 25 Group Royal Observer Corps. Warming up, ready for the game. Don't know if my knees could handle it these days. <laughs> Hello, this is Eddie Gemmel from Fitma Shorts. As probably you're all well aware that over the years we've been going out to football parks with young volunteers, teach them how to use the media and to film football matches. We've now set up a, a, a new site called Coffee. You now I can do with a coffee here, by the way. It's really cold here at Rugby Park today, but the coffee is KO-FI. Dot com. In there you can donate any sort of money, you could buy a coffee for three pence or you can donate to the company. Now, the idea is so we can buy more equipment. The equipment we have just now is about seven years of age old. Now the problem is we want to keep up to date, keep up to speed with everything that's happening within the media. So any donations from yourself to ourselves, greatly appreciated. Remember www.coffee.com. That's K O dash FI. Ayrshire is home to some of Scotland's most stunning landscapes and rich history. And at the heart of capturing it all, there's us, Ayrshire Film Co. CIC. Our goal is to tell stories that matter. Stories that bring attention to the unique beauty and history of Ayrshire. And as a social enterprise, we are dedicated to providing high quality training and meaningful opportunities to young people in Ayrshire. From documentaries to short films, we are bringing to life the stories of the people, places and events that make Ayrshire special. The Ayrshire Film Company have helped us to tell... Hello and welcome back to the scene. We're now here with Scarlett O'Sullivan who is only 13 years old. <laughs> Tell us, like, at such a young age. Uh, well, I really had no idea that this existed before. Mm -hmm. um, like, I met Scott and I started getting guitar lessons from him, and then he introduced me to this. He found out I could sing, then I got to do some gigs and stuff, and it's amazing because you meet such amazing people, and it's just wild. I didn't know any of this existed before, and <laughs> it's, it's just such an experience. Oh, I agree. Um, how how did you start, like, obviously you're in your choir and your folk group, but how did you really begin, what age and why? I don't really know, I've been, 
I've loved music for as long as I can remember. Like, even even when I was still in my mum's tummy, um, she, when she was watching The X Factor, um, I would like kick. I would like be kicking at her um, once the, when The X Factor uh, music came on, and I don't know. I've just I did like dancing. Like mm -hmm. I started that the day before I turned two. I've always loved music and singing and stuff and. It's just great. It's <laughs> I don't know. I love it. Yeah. Who's your favourite artist, and who do you like aspire to be like when you're older? <laughs> well, of course, Debbie. Yeah. <laughs> um, my favourite. I don't. I will probably Taylor Swift and Olivia Rodrigo. They're yep. my favourites. I know they're like. Some people say that they're like. Overused or like well, overrated. Like, overrated, yeah, that's the word. Um, but I just love them. Like Olivia Rodrigo, like the the real like emotion and the power in her yeah. songs. It's just beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How do you get over? Sorry, obviously I asked this last time, but since you're so young, obviously you've not get as much experience as everyone else doing the stage. Right? How do you get over? It? Right. So <laughs> I've been performing for quite a while in different ways but it's it's never easy it doesn't get that much easier but I feel like if you just you know fake it till you make it a bit yeah. <laughs> um, sometimes I'm just like really nervous I get up people say well, once you're up there it's fine I'm it's still it's nervous not <laughs> it's not fine <laughs> um, I just I don't know I get up start singing petrified yeah. um, I don't know just I don't know, look at the people that you know, and you, and then, I, it sounds really cliche, but, or whatever, but I just, like, you know, get carried away into yeah. the music, you know. Mm. Yeah, we start, I always walk up there on my violin, I'm quite, uh, I should say that, <laughs> and then I finally get over it eventually. Yeah. But, have you got any tips for anyone who's just, like, starting out, like, especially for younger? <laughs> um, I don't know. <laughs> just just go for it just mm. don't don't back out just go you're not gonna regret it it it's just just go for it go mm. out there just give it a bash <laughs> just just to ask you you're still at school just now yeah yeah <laughs> what's your school i'm at wellington wellington just down here yeah yeah <laughs> and obviously you're studying music um yeah <laughs> are you studying yeah and is your intentions to go into something like music to the Royal Conservatoire in Glasgow? Um, well, I don't really know right now. I'm quite young, but I want to be somewhere in the arts industry, like either something to do with music or film or something, anywhere, something creative I've always wanted to do, you know. Um, <laughs> how, how do you yeah. find at your age to get into the music scene? I mean, are, there, are there plenty of venues that would accept the under 16s, for example, because I know young people do come to me for film and media, and some parents don't allow them to come along because they're under 16, because we're going out and film it, and they're going to be on YouTube or whatever, and social media, and somebody like yourself get into venues at a younger age. Have you found that difficult? Um, well, yeah, I mean, it was weird. I didn't really know what to do at first. It was just all really, you know, I didn't really know what was going on. I was like, okay, sure, let's try this. Um, I'll start with a bunch of adults and stuff, but um, I did actually, um, there are actually a lot of younger people when you get to, like, I don't really know, but. Um, yeah, to play yeah. different venues, you'll, you'll meet mm -hmm. different people. Yeah, you yeah. do meet younger people, but it is quite stressful. <laughs> Do you think, because obviously you're quite young, you get undermined a lot because, like, as a, like, a singer, obviously, because you're so young, so you, I do, like, think people look like, oh, she's just 13. Is that actually taking into account how good you are as a singer? Well, I mean, I feel like with some things, it's definitely like that, but with singing and stuff, you know, I feel like it is a bit of an, advan an advantage because they're like, oh, it's just, it's a, it's a young one, you know, like, <laughs> you know, it kind of helps in a way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. Would you like to perform your two songs, just? All right. Yeah. Wish you luck.
Thank you. Well, welcome to the stage, Scarlett O'Sullivan. Super sister, super. It's okay with among friends, we'll take the take <laughs> One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. Super sister, super sonic, super star, it's our honor. It's Simon Curl with that X Factor that ever happened when she was born. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to sabotage your song. <laughs> Testing, testing, one, two, three. And once again, welcome to the stage, Scarlett O'Sullivan. Third time's a charm. Super sister, super sonic, super star.
just want to say it's very new. Only started writing it this month. And it wouldn't have existed if it wasn't for the help of my amazing friend, Sophia Borthwick, who's here tonight. <laughs> who co-wrote this with me. So thank you very much. <laughs> Further down the line, I feel an aching in my bones. Seeing couples all the time, but I'm still all alone. Ages hasn't changed that much. Too naive and full of trust. Still don't know if I wanna love all the first kiss and the clear skies from now on. To miss a pair of gorgeous eyes, I want the young love and the butterflies and to never ever. Something wrong, or is this someone for me? I'm too scared to let on. It's eating me alive. Slowly bite by bite. So just give me a sign. So I'm the first kiss and the clear skies and no one to miss a pair of gold eyes then. is still alive and we've got original music like that yeah. and performers like that a big round of applause again and to Scott Nicholl as well for his support with all the acts <laughs> I'm going to welcome to the stage we'll be very very lucky to have as a, a guest on the, the scene here in growing coffee and air a, a young man who has been around the music scene for a wee while and it's a privilege to have him on stage to talk about his life and career so far and to tell us what he thinks of the music scene in Ayrshire. So welcome to the stage, Jeremy Levine. <laughs> Hello. Hi Jeremy, you okay? <laughs> yeah, good, thank you for saying young man. I young man, yeah, well, you're younger than me, Jeremy, that's amazing. <laughs> You've got more hair than me, that's for sure. <laughs> My wife keeps saying, Jeremy, get that off, for God's sake. You get too old for it. But um, just to ask you about the music scene in Ayrshire, what's your opinion of it? Uh, I think the music scene in Ayrshire is uh, very vibrant, actually. Obviously, as Debbie said, it's, uh, after COVID, it's kind of uh, slowed down a wee bit, but there's still lots of opportunities to play every, pretty much every weekdays, from the Thursday break, at least. And um, if it wasn't for Ayrshire, I don't think I would be doing music today, to be fair. So that's really when I started uh, playing uh, more uh, on stages, because in France, where I'm from, there's not many as much, uh, as many opportunities to play uh, as we have here, I think. And I come from a big city in France, and Air that is 
even smaller than where I come from, is, uh, has more opportunities. So we're, I think, lucky in some ways. So. I think we're fortunate we have places like Grow, for example, and other the venue and places like that, Bungalow up there in Paisley as well, where a number of people go and perform. But the, the problem is that they're slowly disappearing. And that's, it's not a good thing. So probably the more we do this, or we had a conversation with Scott recently, they're talking about coming up with a program like this to try and highlight to people like yourself who are producing new original music, yeah. you know, and doing it live and to try and entice them out. Because I'm finding nowadays people tend to go sit in the back door and have their parties there. Whereas yourself, you've travelled from France to here and you're finding that there's venues here and not in France. I mean, there must be more coffee shops, surely. <laughs> yeah, that's true, but I, I don't think, uh I mean, French people la love music as well, but I, f I feel like uh, Scottish people are, love even more live music, I would say. I think the audience in Scotland is even more, uh, they're up for a party, they're up for a sing-along. So, would you agree with that, yeah? And I think, uh, I think tonight was a testament of what you guys do, and uh, as Debbie said and Scott said, uh, the audience is everything. Obviously, we write songs for us, but also for everyone to listen to, so having an audience like Scottish people, it's, uh, yeah, it's a gift, I think. Inspiration-wise, who inspired you at the very beginning? Uh, I know he doesn't, I, I'm not going to like it, but I, I think Scott is, is a good inspiration. I've said that to you before, um, not only on stage, but when I started playing here, I met Scott here uh, in, in, Scott, in Ayrshire, and he really, you gave me the confidence, to, seriously, to perform and to interact with the crowd. I'm still, I'm still nervous to perform. And uh, I watch you every time, I've, and you're so at ease. So I've learned from Scott quite a lot. But we see, uh, in terms of musical influences, I would say Jamie Collum is a big uh, yeah. uh, one that I love, yeah. Stage-wise, with stagecraft, it's something you have to learn. Oh, yeah, yeah. How to entice that audience to yeah, attract their attention. I know Scott's very, very good at that. Yeah. Would you say that's something that you've, you've had to work on over the years? Oh yeah, I'm still working on it to be fair. Yeah, yeah I'm still reflecting on gigs after I play and just to, you know, just, just think oh, what went well, what went wrong. Um, one thing that I've learned when I studied performing, I think Rona, you said that, uh, like uh, to, you know, I didn't really, I didn't really uh, used to look at people's eyes when I was performing. Now I try to obviously connect with people, so I've learned along the years to, to kind of get better, but I'm still learning. There's one thing I have to learn is when I sing without a guitar, I can't hold the mic with, a, with my left hand. Oh, like, I'm too scared to do it. I, so I've not done it yet, so you won't see me do that tonight, for sure. That's for sure. Yeah. Do, do, you, do you have any rituals? You know, footballers have rituals before they go to a football park. Do you have something you do before you come on stage? Uh, no, I, war I warm up. Like, I would say 30 minutes before. Every time I sing, yeah. In a gym? Uh, no, 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 no. No, no. Um, at a home, but... I was in the toilets earlier, sorry, too much information, but <laughs> I think Scarlett's dad was in it as well, so I was like, okay, I'm gonna try to do like uh, some <laughs> but without being heard and stuff, so that's what I do, that's what I do. So don't, you don't freak out if you hear me. You mentioned Scottish people, you know, and the attitude. You hear that from a lot of bands. The top bands say that they love to play places like the Barrowlands and things like that. But why is that? Why do you think the Scottish people have that? Some sort of comfort that they have within a live venue? I don't know, I think in general, if you talk about culture, if you've been to France, you probably would agree, I think Scottish people are friendlier than, than the French. Ah, uh, right. Yeah, I think, and that's why I love Scotland so much, I think people are so nice, uh, so I wouldn't change that in the world. I think it explains a lot, even when you go to a, a pub or somewhere, and you don't know anyone, somebody's gonna talk to you, so. Even in the toilets or something. Again, I keep mentioning toilets, I'm sorry. But in France, if you're in the toilets, people don't speak to you. Whereas here, you would get... <laughs> it's, it's wiser, you're right, yeah, that's right. So you, you get peace in the toilet, that's uh, right. You get, yeah. <laughs> that's where us men go, that's where we disappear, I think. Is that right? Uh, to talk about songs itself, I mean, the type of songs you produce, uh, how, how would you explain it? What kind of genre would you say they were? I would say definitely more pop rock, but I've got some French songs as well that are more like kind of a Caribbean summery vibe, but pop rock is definitely the main genre, I would say. Have you been to Caribbean? Have you ever played? My dad is from the Caribbean, yeah. Ah, right. So, 
Yeah, actually, all the family from my dad's side are from Martinique, so it's a Caribbean island. So I'm, I'm one of the only white person on my dad's side. My dad is black, my brother is black. Well, you know, kind of um, yeah. mixture. Yeah. Do you stay here? Do you stay in France? Or do you they stay in France, yeah. Stay yeah. in France. How do you commute back and forward? What, what do you do? I don't. <laughs> I don't. I don't. <laughs> no, no, I sometimes I, I do more now, but I would say because I have a family now, I'm a, I'm a dad, I'm a new ah, dad, right. so uh, I try to stay as much as I can at home, so yeah. What age is it? Your, your He's two. He's two, but we, we're expecting another baby as well. Oh, so. congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you're in for a handful, I'll tell you. All right. <laughs> Do you have some yourself? I've got, I've got grandkids now. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but the um, other hard work, you know that, Jeremy. But um, to talk about the music scene again, I, mean, I, I get it quite a lot when I speak to people. The music scene's dying. You know, there's a lot of negative people out there who do that. When you meet Scots, people like Debbie and so on, who continually say, no, it's not. But there's a lot of people out there still do it. How can we convince them? How do we do more of this? What can we do to pull the crowds back in and get the venues filled, filled again? I think creating events like uh, you guys have done tonight, so well done for putting such a really beautiful event. Doing events like that, making it more special for people to, to come to these shows. I think what's missing in Ayrshire is festivals, for example. I know we used to have the, the one in uh, Roselle Park, but I think bringing bigger events like that to give uh, younger folks the chance to, to take on an acoustic tent or things like that, stages and stuff, I think that's the, the way forward, I would say. Do, do you spend time with young people to support and help? Uh, yeah, but actually it's funny because Scarlett, who sang so beautifully earlier, I teach German to Scarlett, so Scarlett and I work together in Wellington, so I'm a teacher in Wellington and we also part of the folk club and Sophia as well, Sophia and Sandy actually teach all of them over there, so, hello guys. So you teach as well? I do, yeah, that's my main job, yeah. teaching. I've got, got to ask you about uh, the future, what's the next step for yourself, where do you see yourself progress? Have you an album coming out, new songs? Yeah, so I've got a, a third album coming, so uh, I'm working on that, uh, and then trying to perform more in France, I would say, or in, like abroad as well, trying to do that, but just keep enjoying myself and having fun singing, so. I think it's marvelous having Jeremy here in the country. There, somebody asked me, uh, I'm frightened to ask you about it, the voice. Oh, what was that like? Somebody says, don't ask him that, Eddie, but. Oh no, it was great, I've, it was I've, really, it was amazing. The voice, so I've obviously I've done The Voice UK and The Voice France yeah. last year, The Voice France, and it was an uh, incredible experience. I never expected to do something, so. And I never tried to do it, so the fact that they asked me to try and audition uh, was quite surprising, but obviously uh, it, you, you learn quite a lot in the process as well, so I really enjoyed, uh, especially the voice France it was amazing because it was uh, not during COVID, so I could uh, really uh, socialize with folks and talk to the crew and people in the show, so. What would happen if you were in the voice and all of a sudden Eric Cantona turned around and says, you're out? Alright, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's not as brutal, but yeah, it's. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's a, yeah, definitely. Uh, sure. yeah, it must be to, to have these seats, you know, facing your back, and then will they turn around? You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, I think, especially in the UK, when they don't turn around, they don't speak to you, but in France, you know that if you're performing, if they don't turn around, they're going to still give you feedback so you can take something away with you, so. It's not racking both times where uh, I was petrified to be fair, but... Yeah. Yeah. The two songs you're going to sing tonight? So, is it two songs, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm going to do, uh, actually, one song from the new album coming out, so it's called Closer, and one that's from the second album, which is called No Tomorrow, which is more like kind of a, a beat song and stuff, so feel free to sing if you know them or... They must know it. <laughs> Maybe, hopefully. The fan club's here, Jeremy. Well, welcome to the stage. Jeremy Levy. Thank you, Jeremy.
was quite high. Actually, there's one part in this song, uh, in Closer, which I invite you to sing along, it goes like this. It goes, So I'll, I'll give you a wee sign when this part comes in, right? So you can... Uh, take it. Actually, this song is out, by the way. I forgot. It's, it's already out. So on the new album, it's already out. So feel free to listen to it after tonight if you want. Here we go. It's called Closer. Thank you for singing so beautifully, that was awesome, really nice. Actually, if you want to listen to this song fully, with the full version, I filmed a music clip a while back in uh, August or so, in the Newer, down in South Asia, and I used the drone, and I was on my own, so the drone was like kind of spinning around, and funny story, I crashed the drone as well, so that's the shame. But, but anyway, I try my best, so feel free to watch the videos, I hope you'll, you'll enjoy it. So the next one is called uh, No Tomorrow, 
and uh, feel free to join in if you if you know the song. Here we go. Now listen to the audience, Jeremy. You can't leave the stage. That's what I was talking about earlier. Thank you, guys. I got Scottish audiences. <laughs> I think we should have another song. Do you yeah. think so? Jeremy, could you give us one more song? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> right. I was not planning to. Well, I was actually planning to do this one. And it's called Loving You All Right. It's going to be on a new album. Um, uh, but actually, it turned, out into, it turned into a love song as well. So I think you said you were at the Scary Bory gig. So I think you, you, you might have heard this song as well. So hope you enjoy this one. Stop it. 
top of you is enough to make me dizzy and sweep me off my feet when I kissed you, baby. And so Off the, the evening, what, what a performance! Another round of applause for Jeremy Levy. Fantastic, great songs. It's the first time I've heard you, Jeremy. So, you really, you have another fan in Scotland. <laughs> so, how do we follow that? That's for sure. <laughs> exactly, Scott. How do we follow that? One? <laughs> I would just like to say quickly before Scott and, and Debbie come on, we are still live just now on YouTube with the TV Ayrshire crew. And a, a big thanks to Grow Coffee for a... <laughs> also to all our guests who came along, Jeremy obviously and Rosemary. Where we've had... Who's, where, where are you, Rowan? Are you sitting at the back there yet? And Debbie and Scott. They're going to take us out in a couple of minutes. Also just to let you know, a great thanks to my crew who have gave up their yes, Saturday night. Yeah, yeah. They're all volunteers, media volunteers, learning the trade. A big round of applause to them. We've got young Marta there from the Ukraine, who joined us last year. She's been on one of the cameras. Well done, Marta. And also to our techie guy, Grant, sitting over there, chewing his nails every time he's watching the screen to see if we're still going live. <laughs> but also, if you want the scene to continue, let us know. Contact us through TV or YouTube uh, or any of our social media channels. I, mean, I think tonight, Scott, I think this has been a big success. And I think I'd like to continue. And also, what we'd like to do as well is give this young lady a round of applause. Fantastic. Alexis Young. 
my very, very first time in front of camera and also to interview stars. Is that right? If you want to see... I would like to thank Eddie for his waffling skills <laughs> because without them I'd be stuck. <laughs> but... Take it away. Who is your favourite person to interview? Mm. I'm gonna okay, have I'll to see you. I'll play that tenor, right? I'm gonna have to yeah, see great. you. Oh, thank you. Mm. <laughs> yeah, give it up for everybody involved in this tonight. It's been amazing. <laughs> so, I've got a debut album here. It's also available on streaming services too, but I've got Old Fashioned School, and, I'm, and I'll, I'll sign it as well, Old Fashioned School um, CDs. So, this next song is on the track. Uh, it was entered into a singing competition, a song competition, and we came third. But I think there was only three folk entered it. Not sure. Anyway, this is our, probably our most requested song, isn't it, Scott? It's got a country theme, so I hope you'll get up and dance for this one. Right now I'm lonesome, I'm lovesick and I'm cold. Oh, I'm lonesome, I'm lovesick and I'm cold. Without you to hug, to kiss, and to hold. Oh, I'm lonesome. I'm loving, and I'm cold. Woo! I see you, I bought a scratch card, watched my dreams disappear. Really thought it would be my ticket out of here. A change of fortune. Tonight, and hopefully we will have another scene coming soon. 
just before we go, yes. we'll get, talking about Ayrshire Tower, we've got the Ayrshire lads at the Gaiety Theatre very soon. And we've got front row seats, we're going to heckle you. So go and support local Gaiety talent, Ayrshire lads. Woohoo! Well, thank you very much, everybody, and have a good, safe home journey tonight. See you soon.